Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the delay. Uh, <laughs> today is my youngest son's birthday, and we are celebrating it, right? So, um, and we're not done, right? So, I'll get back to celebrating with him after I do what God has called me to do, uh, but... Uh, I'm excited. He's he's five today, and so um, feel free to wish him a happy birthday if you don't mind. And uh, we love old Deacon, right? So, hey, <laughs> it's Thursday, and this is what we do, right? We do our thing. So, um, man, great week this week from uh, our squad members. Appreciate you guys doing for what you do. Um, and man, so uh, I've been tasked with First Chronicles twenty-two, and man, uh, as I read through it this week, uh, <laughs> uh, it was some, I, it was some, it was some good, it was some meat, man, and um, I had to do some churning and some chewing, and man, you guys, um, when I allowed the Holy Spirit to speak. Uh, it was an amazing thing, right? So, man, I'm going to talk about process, number one. I'm going to talk about knowing the God that you serve, number two. And number three, I'm going to uh, talk about, um, I don't even know how to put this plainly, but ultimately what, what it comes down to is you have to know in whom you believe, right? And what I mean by that is you, you got to know that, just because something or someone says something um, and we have respect for that person, when you go back and you check the record of what actually has been said, man, you, <laughs> we, we, we just have to go with it, right? Hey, Tiff, can you share this in him too, the group, if you don't mind? Thanks, babe. Uh, thanks for joining me. All right, so, man, I'm going to do my... Uh, I'm not going to do my best. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And I'm going to share what he's given me. And uh, I pray that uh, he will allow me to articulate this point of view uh, as best as possible. And uh, be clear about what I'm sharing here. This won't be jump up and down. This, right? We have established a group of people in this squad. Um, for the most part, we, we all pretty much have an analytical thought process, right? And I've really had to use that tonight uh, or this week. And so I'm, I'm asking that you all, um, with all you're getting, right? We, we don't want answers. We want understanding, right? Because if you try to seek to find the answer to the question without really understanding what the question is being asked, we have a problem. Right. And so I want to be clear tonight. God spoke and it is up to us not to mince his words. Uh, what's up, Angela? Thank you for joining me. Right. And so uh, I'm ready to get started, y'all. So <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right. Chapter 22, verse one, it says, then David said, the house of the Lord God is to be here and also the altar of burnt offerings for Israel. What's up, Felton? Now, I want to say this, y'all, because this is really, really serious. This is really serious because this is what divides, and I say divide, I'm not talking about divide and division, but this is what separates the disciples from just the normal believers. You think you shared it? Okay, Angela, Marcus, uh, okay. If somebody could just see if she shared it to him too. Shared it to the group, so hopefully. But, this I want us to see something uh, because in scripture, how do you come to a consensus about what scripture is actually saying? Hey, Miss Darden, thank you for joining me. You guys buckle up tonight. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to ride us in ride, ride us pretty hard tonight. <laughs> what we do is you take other scriptures and and then you also have to come to an understanding that there is no contradiction, right? Thank you very much. Thank you so much for telling me that. Hey, Ms. Brookings, thank you for joining me. Appreciate that. 
and, 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 and when you come to, to, to your foundation in who God is, and this is what it gets really tricky about what we're doing and what others are attempting to do, because if your foundation is not solid, then when you begin to maneuver through scripture and you begin to see things and you're like, ah, it's a little contradictory. I, I don't know. I'm just going to, I, I just believe what I want to believe in. And uh, interpretation. Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of room for interpretation if you give scripture an opportunity to speak for itself and then validate itself in scripture. It, it's, it's really, it really has the ability to do so. And I'm going to show that tonight, right? And we have to have the understanding and the maturity to know that when it does not uh, uh, fit with our logic or our tradition or what we have uh, uh, grown up to believe because of someone has shared with us or we have respect of person to have told us some things. But man, listen, God has given us all the same spirit and he's given us all the word of God. And we all have the ability to give him the opportunity what to speak. And so I believe he's done that tonight. And so I want to show, show this in this moment. It says the house of the Lord God is to be here and also the altar of burnt offerings for Israel. So David gave orders to assemble the aliens living in Israel. And from among them, he appointed stone cutters to prepare dressed stones for building the same house of God. He provided a large amount of iron to make nails for the doors of the gateways and for the, the fittings and more bronze. So it goes on to share about what David's plans were in regards to building this temple. Now, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and we talked about it in Proverbs. There is a way unto man that seems to be right, but it can lead you to, a, to the wrong path, right? And, and I'm going to say this. On surface, this does not look wrong, right? It does not seem to be a problem. But ladies and gentlemen, when you are in relationship with someone, there is no fake news. Hey, Tanya, thank you for joining us, right? Right? And so this is the problem. And I found it really interesting because in a world of social media, you'll see people who will post things, um, I remember someone, uh, we were talking about Joel Osteen, and he posted something, and it's, it, it was a little suspect, but it was it didn't look like him or sound like him, but I don't know him to be able to say it was him or not. But it was showing something that somebody was asking for prayer, and then this this Twitter, this Twitter account was saying, well, uh, you need to be paying $24.99 a month for my prayers. And if you hadn't done that, well, then we can't answer your prayers, or we can't pray for you. And on surface, you would say, oh, look at that, man, that's that Osteen. I mean, we could disagree in theology, we can disagree in doctrine, but I don't have a relationship with this man to whether know that whether he what he was saying to that person was right or wrong. And then someone chimed in who had more information, who uh, uh, investigated a little further, said, man, that's fake. That, that has been uh, uh, altered. And, and this is what I love about this moment that we're gonna get into, y'all. If you take this understanding and where we know that we have a, 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 a people who will try to misrepresent God, who will try to take things and say, well, God said this and God said that. And if we don't have a relationship with God and we'll be like, man, did he really? That'll send our mind on this whirlwind, y'all. <laughs> and you'll, you'll be like, God, are you really speaking? God, I don't know. because, I... Yeah, y'all. And listen, I promise you, I know I have a relationship with God, right? But there are times when I'm trying to walk through this process called life and I'm needing God to give me a, a clarity in certain situations. But what do I have to fall back on? I have to fall back on what God has said previously to me and how he has demonstrated his communication to me in our relationship. Right. My relationship is not the same as any of you all. Right. So as long as you have figured out how God speaks to you and there in that moment, you see the validity behind that. Well, then there it is. But if you have inconsistency in your conversation with God, where you said God told you to do this and it didn't come to pass, well, then you have to reevaluate the relationship. Right. And so when you get into this moment, we're about to get into y'all. I promise you, God has spoken and he has shown how he communicates. And this is one thing that we know, right? 
And y'all know y'all, if y'all been in church any time, the old folks say he is a God and he changes not. We've heard that. And I promise y'all, it's the truth. So what I'm going to show y'all in scripture to validate this moment here, he does not change. And when you see something being altered, we have a problem. It seems to be right, but it's not the way we've seen him operate. And that's what we have tonight. So David here is making this moment plain. He says, listen, I'm, we're getting ready to build this altar because Nathan spoke to me and yada, yada, this and the third. But again, are we clear about what Nathan said or were we looking for the answer and, and, and trying to move forward? Right? We don't seek to find the answer, but we're seeking to understand the question. <laughs> and God gives. All right. All right. I ain't going to get ahead of myself. Woo, I'm ready to preach now. All right. So here it is. David goes through this process and he's telling them, listen, I'm giving the orders. Get the foreigners. Get the stuff. Solomon's going to build. He's not old enough yet, but I'm getting things ready. The problem with this moment, ladies and gentlemen, is number one. God made a statement and I want to go back and refer to it. Right. I want to show you guys something. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 7. Because, I listen, we got to compare and contrast, right? We got to see. We got to analyze. Not, not, not exegene. Not, 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 not isogene. We're going to investigate. We want to see what God actually said, right? Because his word does not return. All right. So 2 Samuel chapter 7. I want to show y'all something. All right, I'm going to be at verse 5. It says, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 5. David says he wanted to build a temple. Right, let me back up. Verse 1, he said, After the king was settled in place, the Lord gave him of rest. He said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a palace of cedar while the ark of the God remains in a tent. Nathan replied, do what you think is right, right? But then God came back to Nathan and then God spoke to Nathan. And this is what God said. Go and tell my servant, David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? Question mark. Seek not to find the answer, but to understand the question. There's a question here, y'all. All right. Watch this. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved, when all the Israelites did, with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Question mark. You better speak, Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> David wanted to do something. God asked two questions. David thought he got the answer, right? No, you needed to have an understanding, David. And what was that understanding? I'll get there in just a second. So I want to pause there for just a second. There's two questions. Number one, he says, are you the one to build me a temple? Are you David? And then my second question is, when have I ever asked anybody to build me a house of cedar? Never. Right? All right, let's jump back to 22. Y'all just, I'm listening. I'm tippy-toeing through this thing because I, get, I need us to, to see what scripture is actually saying. Right? So David said to my son Solomon in verse Five. David said, my son Solomon is young and inexperienced and the house to be built for the Lord should be a great, magnificent and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Number one, if you know our God, this is not what God is asking for man to do. He is not asking us to build him a miraculous mega church. He wants you. You are the temple. He doesn't want uh, six bathrooms, uh, 2,500 seat stadiums. He doesn't want uh, uh, big fish tanks 
marble flooring. He's not asking for that. What he's asking for you is to be a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That is what God is requiring of his temple. This seems to be right. And it seems to be that David found the answer, but he didn't understand the question. Ah, my God today. So here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. David is wanting to do something. How do I know? Because he keeps using the word I, I, I. I want to do this. I'm going to use my stuff. I'm going to do this. What's the problem with this? I'll tell you why, right? Because, <laughs> watch this, y'all. In verse three, he's telling them he provided a large amount of iron. David did. That's not what God does. God is the one who gives the provision, ladies and gentlemen, right? In verse five, it says, David said to my son Solomon, my son Solomon is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor. Yeah, 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 that's exactly right. This seems to be right. But David has been assuming. I'm going to tell you why. Because he makes a mistake. Verse 7 says. Verse 6 says. Uh, no, it says. Uh, let me keep reading on. It says, Splendor in the sight of all the nations. Therefore, I, David there again, will make preparation for it. So David made extensive preparations before his death. Huh. David's doing all this, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want you say, well, what is the problem? God, he's a man out of God's own heart. Da, 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 da Right? This is the problem. If Let's go and look at what we've seen prior. When God asked Noah to do something, purpose, God said, I want to use Noah to build me a boat. Noah said, a boat? I ain't never built a boat. I know you ain't never built a boat. I'm going to tell you how to build a boat. If y'all remember, we talked about it because I said this. I know I said it because I remember me saying it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, why do I care about how long the things are that was supposed to be in the boat. Why do I care how many feet high? Why do I care about that? You know why I care about that now? Because God gave the instruction to Noah. You say, why is that so significant? Because Noah didn't know how to build a boat. And then God wanted him to build a boat, so God gave him the instruction to build a boat. Come on out of here now. This is what I'm getting at. You don't see no instruction from God in this moment, y'all. You see a man who is seeming to be right, trying to do something that God asked the question, when have I ever <laughs> asked somebody or told somebody to build me a house of cedar? We'll get to the understanding in just a second, right? I got another one. Remember when Moses came out and they came out of the temple. I mean, they came out of Egypt. How did they, how was the provision made? Because God gave them the provision because he told the people in Egypt, go ask them, he told the Israelites, go ask them and they'll give you all that you need. And they left with millions. Remember that? And then if you go back and read in scripture, God began to tell Moses how he wanted the temple to, whoo, how he wanted the temple to be built. What was supposed to be done with the scars? And the coloring and how what was supposed to be placed in the inner courts, the outer courts and the holies of holies. God was giving him what? The instructions. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to beat this horse till it die and then come back alive again and die again. Man's great ideas has nothing on God's instructions. See, the problem is David wanted to do this. And God said, you're not the one to do this. But then that became a misconception, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm telling y'all, I know folks in my family right now that have a misconception. You know why? Because they think they're hearing from God. And you know why they think they're hearing from God? Because they've never built this relationship with God to understand how God communicates with them. And so when God is speaking, so they say, and he's speaking, sometimes he's hidden and sometimes he's missing, but they're just having this so-called hope and faith. This, this I'm talking about, it ain't even hope and faith. It's like, it's like you, uh, what, what, what is it called? Superstition. It ain't even, hey, Tiffany, thank you for joining me. It ain't even faith and hope in him, right? It's superstition because you may happen sometime and it may not happen sometime, but I'm going to trust him. No, you're not. You're going to do what you want to do because like I said, the old ghetto boys, they mind playing tricks on them, right? We know how we, it does, right? 
We'll try to get ahead of stuff. We'll try to make up conscious stuff in our own mind. And we'll say, man, no, God, make the light turn red right now. And, and I know what you, you mean. Well, it's going to turn red regardless because it's a red light. And it's going to turn green again. And then guess what? It's going to turn red again. So you can't base that superstitious way of thinking on how God speaks to you. Get in his word. See how he operates and then see him maneuver in your life exactly the way he's doing. So I've shown you two instances when God wants something done for man, he'll tell man what he wants to do. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not tell man to build his temple. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Y'all think I'm making this up. Watch this. Because this, listen, David is a respected man, right? He's a leader. He's a man that, that people are listening to. It. And this is where we can't get caught up, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot get caught up in leadership from a human being and think that he is not without error. Man is with error. So, right? When God speak, it is so. But when man speak, it's so, so. Right? I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all. I'm, I'm not playing tonight. I'm just try I'm trying to analyze this moment so that we can see that there is no contradictions where there may seem to be. Okay, so let's get back to 22 because I, I got more to show, right? Then he called, verse 6, then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord. Again, this is David doing this, y'all. I got no issue with David because this is what we do. This is how we operate when we're operating without the spirit leading us, right? This is what we do. It says, the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, my son, I had it in my heart. Did y'all see this? Motive. Here we go. Here's some motive right here. Now we begin to see the motive behind what, what, what he's, he's trying to say that it's really supposed to be. He's, here's the motive. David said to Solomon, verse 7, in, in 1 Chronicles 22, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this, it, but this word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But, but you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He is the one who will build a house for my name. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. This, ladies and gentlemen, is where... <laughs> I, 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 I like to use the term from a gentleman. His name is Hank Hanegraaff. He said, this is the skin of the truth, but it's stuffed with a big fat lie. For the most part, and y'all know how we do, right? We can tell all the truth until we'll slide a little line there, right? That's what we do. Everything David said, he was supposed to be repeating what Nathan told him because God had came to Nathan after David said he wanted to build it. And the problem is, is that most of everything David said was right, except for what? Verse 10. And I, let's go see. Let's analyze it, right? Remember what he said here, right? All right, let's go back to see what Nathan said. 2 Samuel chapter 7, again, right? All right, I'm going to start at verse 5. I want y'all to tell me what's missing. Let's play this game. <laughs> y'all tell me what didn't get said. Woo, yeah, I'm telling y'all, this blew my mind. It says that night, verse four, the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant, David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out, up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Whatever I have, wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Verse eight. Now, here we go. Let's pay close attention. I'm trying, bro. I'm going to. Verse eight says, now then tell my servant David, 
This is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with your with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all of your enemies. We heard that the Lord declares to you the Lord that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. The Lord himself will establish a house for you. Not you establish a house for the Lord. I, I'm not dyslexic, right? The Lord declares, so it is so to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Verse 12 says, when your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you who will come from your own body and I will establish his kingdom he is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by men, my Lord Jesus. But my love will never be taken away from him. Man, I... If that ain't revelation, okay, I ain't got time. Did y'all just see what he said? When he has done wrong, when he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men. That, that is that is ridiculous. Y'all know how they beat Jesus, right? And if Jesus is wrong, he became wrong for us. Oh my Lord, God, help me. Did y'all see what this just said? It says, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by men. Y'all didn't see. No, OK. All right. I, that, that ain't that ain't hear what I'm teaching. That's just, oh, my God. I won't start crying, Lord. But my love will never be taken away from him. As I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house and your kingdom will endure forever. Before me, your throne will be established forever. Where did he say that you were going to have a son named Solomon and Solomon was going to build the temple? It didn't happen. Right. But David didn't hear him well. He thought he got the answer, but he missed the understanding because David began to say things, appreciating him for that. But I'm telling y'all, 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 this is Christ. This ain't Solomon, right? Th that ain't Solomon. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm, I got more to say. Hold on. <laughs> David missed all of this, right? David, you didn't, he didn't say this. So David makes up these things, right? David, <laughs> David begins to share uh, about what he thought he heard Nathan say. Why? You know why? Because this is why. Because David said to Solomon, my son, I had in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. Did y'all see what I just said? You know why David couldn't hear what Nathan actually said to him? Because David had it in, in, in his heart. He already had determined what he was wanting to do. Regardless of what he thought he heard, he wouldn't meditate on it. He wouldn't. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, does that sound familiar to anybody tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible speaks about the heart. And the Bible says that the heart is the most deceitful of it all. So when you tell somebody, God knows my heart, and you trying to spend it like you, try, you God knows I'm trying to do the right thing. 
No, no, no. When you actually saying that, you're saying that God knows the intent of your heart, your manipulating way, your conniving, your deceitful way. I got it. It seemed to be right, David. But this is why you didn't hear what Nathan said clearly. I know. Listen, you can hear the teacher. You can hear the preacher sometimes, but sometimes you miss it. You know why? Because we distracted. You can call your friend. You can call your sister. You can call your brother. You can say, hey, y'all, y'all talk me off this ledge because I'm getting ready to do something. And I know I shouldn't be doing it. I know I shouldn't be with this person. We call our homeboy. Man, I, listen, man, y'all, listen, man, I'm, I'm trying to work through this thing. I'm thinking about doing something. No, you already trying to do it. Because you know why? Because your heart want to do it. I feel like getting, I feel like, no. Then you miss what I actually said. <laughs> because you know why? Because I told you. Did I ask you to build me something? And you not the person to build it for me. But you know what he was trying to do with his heart, with his right heart? He says, I know. He said, I can't do it. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go. Solomon going to do it. You know why? But then Solomon too young, so I, I'm going to help Solomon. So in all in all in all honesty, you really is still trying to do it. I know, I know we can spin it, we can toss it around, flip it, whatever you want to call it. It's still you still keep trying to do something that I already told you. If I wanted you to do it, I'd have told you how to do it and when to do it. Whoop! Lord have mercy. I'm just trying to teach tonight. I'm trying to analyze this moment because there is no contradiction in this moment. See, see, David is like those this social media. He manipulated the tweet. He manipulated the Facebook post. And it say, he thought it said something. And because it came from David, everybody like, yeah, he said it. Did he really say it? That's why I appreciate. I'm never going to throw away my Bibles because they'll begin to start trying to put stuff in the, these uh, electronic things and try to flip up something. Well, I'm going to go check the scripture. I got I got my pages. I want to hear them things turning and I want to go read it for myself. What you say, Andrew? Yep, out of the vessel, that's the mouth speaks, and that's right. And he was speaking, and he was sounding so profound. Yes, God is calling my young son because I couldn't do it, but now I'm going to allow Solomon to do it. So bring me all the stuff. Bring the foreigners. We're finna get to work. Just like a good old politician, ain't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. He repeated what he wanted instead of repeating what the word said. And that's what we got to get to tonight, y'all. We got to stop repeating what we want to hear and repeat what actually God is saying. I'm not done talking about it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So did, did God actually say, verse 9 and verse 10, what he, what he really said? No, let's see what he said. David said in verse 9, and y'all go back and look for it. I, I'm okay with this because I'm only reading. It says, but you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest, and I will give him rest. So he began to tell David, you will have a son. I'll give him peace. Go back and check scripture. God gave Solomon peace over his enemies, right? And he said, I, I, what did he say? I will give him rest from all his enemies. Go back and check. That's exactly what God did for him, right? And it said every side, his name will be Solomon, and I will grant Israel peace and quiet. I didn't say I'm going to build a temple. I said I'm going to bring rest and quiet and peace. But I told you that I'm going to, you're going to do your, sue your seed, which that's the truth, right? Because through the line of Judah, through the line of David, we, 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 we begot Christ, right? And at that moment, that's what he said. And again, let's check scripture. David, when you heard Solomon, I mean, when you heard Nathan say, he will be my son and I will be his father. He's not talking about Solomon because remember, Abraham on I mean uh 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 yeah Abraham only had one son in the eyesight of God. It wasn't Esau, it was Isaac. Right? Yes. If the Bible speaks and says that Jesus is God's only begotten son, it's not going to again. We can't say now that God's talking about Solomon uh, proverbially or, or he's speaking uh, uh, with ambiguity. No, he's not. We're just not understanding what he's saying because our heart wants to believe something else. Oh, the process. Woo. Lord Jesus today. That's the problem. 
right? He only had one son and his son was going to come through David and that's who was going to build his kingdom. I know what they want to teach us. I know what they want us to say. We, listen, we want to be, listen, they mega church in, they got all the prosperity preachers, all that, I, I got it. And listen, I don't know who's worse, them for preaching it and, or the people for following it. I don't know which one is worse, right? I know who's going to get the more accountability, but if nobody follows them, they have no power. All right, I'll move on. So I'm telling y'all, <laughs> he says, so David starts lying, which is cool. It is what it is because he was going to build the, he wanted to build a temple regardless. And that's the thing about God, man. He's never built anything that was supposed to be torn down, that was supposed to be taken away. Everything he built, he built eternally. And y'all remember, Solomon's temple is going to be torn down. I'm, 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 I'm going to get on something else and I'm, I'm out of here. All right. Verse 10 says, um, he is the one who will build a house for my name. He will be my son and I will be his father and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. That's true, but we wasn't talking about Solomon. All right, verse 11. Now, my son, the Lord be with you and may you have success and build the house of the Lord your God as he said you would. May the Lord give you discretion and understanding when he puts you in command over Israel so that you may keep the law of the Lord your God, then you will have success. If you are careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave Moses for Israel, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I have taken great pain to provide for the temple of the Lord. Did y'all see that? Again, this, 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 these little small things. <laughs> so I want to show y'all something because I want to show y'all the problem where, 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 you, where you see what Solomon did. Let's jump back over to uh, 1 Kings chapter 6. And I'm almost done. I hope I'm making myself clear tonight. I hope, I hope I'm articulating what scripture has made clear tonight. I see it like that. <laughs> Woo! Lord have mercy. All right. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, In 400 years, in, in the 480th year after Israel, after the Israelites had come out of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, the second month, he began to build the temple of the Lord. Okay, seems right. The temple that King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits long, 20 wide. So they began to list how big. And if you don't pay attention, you'll be like, oh, see, that's how I do. They start listing how long and how high. No, God told Noah. God told Moses. This just said that King Solomon built for the Lord and it starts naming how, but it didn't say that the Lord told Solomon to build. And I'm going to show you something. Let's, I want to go back over here. To, to, uh, I'm going to start at verse, verse 9. So he built the temple and completed it, roofing it with beams and cedar planks. Hmm. And he built the side rooms. And y'all remember this. Remember when I talked about this one in 1 Kings. Remember Solomon actually built his temple bigger than he built God's temple. And that was already jacked up right there, right? Well, right, that you want to build your, you want to build God a temple, but you want to make sure yours is bigger than his. All right, y'all remember I said that, and it holds still true today, the motive of the man's heart. All right, so it says, verse 10, and he built the side rooms all along the temple. The highest, the, I mean, the height of each was five cubits, and they were attached to the temple by beams of cedar. Verse 11, the word of the Lord came to Solomon. Wow. So now after Solomon got through, then the word of the Lord came to Solomon. Watch this, y'all. As, as for this temple, you are building. 
Did y'all see what that just said? God, the word of the Lord came to Solomon and said, as for this temple you are building, if you follow my decrees, carry out my regulations and keep all my commands and obey them, I will fulfill through you the promise I gave to David, your father, and I will live among the Israelites and will not abandon my people Israel. Nothing about the temple, y'all. He said, listen, about this temple you're building. All right. But this is what I'm telling you. If you want to, uh, if you follow my decrees and carry out my regulations and commands and obey me, I will fulfill through you the promise I gave to David. And the promise he gave to David was not to build a temple. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Verse 14 says, so Solomon built the temple and completed it. He, uh, Y'all got to see this tonight. Y'all got to see this tonight, that God did not actually tell him to build a temple. He did it on his own volition. He did it on his own motives. And God only spoke and said, listen, I don't care about that little old temporary stuff. I, you carry out my decrees. You do what I say. And that was so funny because David actually said the same thing in First Chronicles, right? He said at, at, at verse 13, he says, then you will have success if you are careful to observe the decrees and laws that the Lord gave Moses up for Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. I'm only analyzing. And, I, and listen, the Bible, I ain't scared of these scriptures. You know why? Because there's no contradictions. But like Tanya said earlier, we make assumptions. And the Bible doesn't give us room to make assumptions. If we don't understand clearly, we have faith. But we have faith in what we know about who God is and what God does. And God does not, he does not uh, change and he will not change. And he does not do things differently for one that he'll do for the other. If he wanted those gentlemen to build a temple, he would have told them how to do it, how long it would have been. And I promise you it would have been bigger than Solomon's temple. All right, I'm almost through. Verse 17. It says, Then David ordered all the leaders of Israel to help his son Solomon. He said to them, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has not has he not granted you rest on every side? For he has handed the inhabitants of the land over to me, and the land is subject to the Lord and to his people. Now devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. Begin to build the sanctuary of the Lord God so that you may bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the sacred articles belonging to God. Into, and y'all know this all became a mess at the end of the day, right? From Hezekiah and them, uh, all the other leaders, even when Babylon came and destroyed this, this, this whole thing. This was not the intent of God. This is not God's will perfect will that we uh, carry on in our own volition, in our own will for what we think God wants. No, matter of fact, he would tell the people in, uh, when we get to Isaiah, listen, all this sacrificing y'all doing and y'all not doing it under the honor and the obedience of God, y'all can shut up the temple. I don't want y'all doing none of that. But God allows us, right? He said, you build it, but if you ain't going to do what I'm telling you to do, then things won't happen for you. And this is where we get caught up, ladies and gentlemen, because we're making decisions. We're doing things that we seem to be right. We think that God is giving us the instructions and they're not lining up, right? Because God didn't protect that temple. God didn't. Okay. All right. All right. All, right. All, right. All I'm saying tonight, ladies and gentlemen, be careful of the decisions you make in life and make sure that you're hearing God clearly. And if you hadn't heard him clearly, then you need to see how God operates. And if you don't know how God operates, then begin to read God's word. And then begin to ask God to clearly show you how he wants to communicate with you. It's okay for you to ask God to give you a sign, although signs are for the non-believers, as scripture says, but if you ask God to then, hey, Tiffany, thank you for joining me, but it's, it's okay to ask God because you know why? Uh, uh, uh. Man, what was his name? And the 300. What was that joker's name? Gideon. Gideon. He asked, God, I don't have enough faith to believe that you're telling me to do this. So give me a sign. 
right? But if you know you headed down a path that God has already, and I'm going to say it, if you're trying to be in a relationship with somebody that you know God is not walking with, if they're not being obedient, if they're not operating in those those and, 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 and those specifics that God has said, you can't ask God to give you a sign for that mess, right? Because then your mind begin to play tricks on you and then you will say, oh, God spoke. No, he didn't speak. He's not going to speak like that. Number one, you make sure the foundation is clear. Know what he's already said and he's not dealing with temporary things. So if you've made mistakes and you say, I want to correct those mistakes, you cannot. Don't cry to correct your mistakes. Right? That's right. Be led by the spirit. Don't try to connect your mistake, correct your mistakes. God is going to use your mistakes. Right? I'm telling y'all, I seen a little boy and I'm done. I seen a little boy uh, on social media. He was on crutches and he had one leg. <laughs> It's crazy, y'all. Had one leg and he played catcher on a baseball field. One leg. And the thing that blew my mind is that all the other boys had two legs. But he was playing catcher and he would pick the ball up. And with one leg, he's hopping. He's throwing the ball. He's, 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 he's hitting the ball with one leg and running to the first base. And he's sliding in the second base with his crutches. He's catching the ball and getting people out with one leg. But what we want to do, we want to get two legs. We want to get our other leg back so we can look like everybody else. But you may have made a mistake. I'm not saying this boy made a mistake, but I'm trying to get you to a place where you understand. You can't have one leg and still play the game of life. But I know we want two legs. But sometimes some of the decisions that you've made won't allow you to have two legs anymore. But if you have one leg and you still play the game and then somebody and then guess what happens? God uses what you've gone through to the people that you're playing the game of life with. And he says, well, man, if he can still play the game with us with one leg, then, man, I need to make sure. Woo, Lord have mercy. Got to preach on his own. So all I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, stop trying to correct your mistakes and allow God to take your mistakes so that others can see that I know I've made a mistake, but I'm going to learn to be content in the, in the moment that I'm in and don't keep making the mistakes. And then when he gives you the opportunity to have a, 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 to make a better, better decision in life, then make it. But make it because you know that's what he said and not because you want in your heart to do better. See, the world has provided us with things if you got jacked up teeth, you can take them out and put new ones in. If you don't like the way your 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 your, uh, your breasts are, or you or, or, or cancer has come in your life, and you look where well, you can get whatever you want, or you can alter your body, or you can do all the things. I, I know the world has made us say that we can do better, <laughs> but that's not what God intended for us to do. He did not tell David to build that temple. He did not tell Solomon to build that temple. But he said, the one who will build my kingdom, he will be my son and I will be his father. And the scripture says, John 3, 16, for God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes. And they had an opportunity to understand in, in the book of first Chronicles that whoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know the beauty of that because God said, my son will have a kingdom that will be everlasting. So I'm just telling you, I don't care if you got one arm, no arms, one leg, no legs. Play the game of life the way God has ha given you the grace to be. Because if you wake up tomorrow and you're still alive, then God wants to use you. Yeah, use what you got for God's glory. That's right, right? Ah, let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this moment, this time. God, I thank you for just giving us uh, more tools to, to iron out the process. God, more clarity uh, to allow the dust to settle, to allow the clouds uh, to evaporate because of the sun. <laughs> because some are afraid of the fog. Because a lot of times we can't see. But the fog can disappear once the sun begins to shine. So I pray, God, that you allow the sun to shine in us through your spirit, through Holy Spirit. 
God, that we can continue not to just make uh, irrational, uh, uh, emotional decisions because we want to live life as best as we could. No, God, we want to live life as Christ is within us. Because if we take away the, the desire to want to live life, our best life now, and we understand that you ask us not to live our life, but to live the life that Christ be in you so that you don't live life of your own, <laughs> but you live life with Christ being in you. Thank you, God, for the clarity. God, I pray uh, that this will help someone uh, in their journey, help someone in their process, help someone in their decision making. Uh, God, when 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 the signs may point in a direction, God, I pray, God, that they will take two steps back. God, allow patience to have its perfect work, that they will lack nothing. And that's even the opportunity to make the wrong decision. We love you today, God. I thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you that uh, me analyzing and us investigating, God, we did not come up empty handed. But what we came up, God, was with the truth of what you're saying, the truth of who you are. Thank you for allowing David to, to be this example, God, so that we can see you more clearly. God, I pray for Aaron on Monday. Uh, God, that you will continue to speak to him and allow us, God, continue to illuminate these scriptures because this world, God, that is becoming more and more dark uh, because you're allowing man to make decisions and not allowing the punishment, God, to come just as quickly as their decision makings are. But God, we're going to stand in the gap and we're going to stand firm. And after we've done all we can, we will begin to stand there for. We love you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Woo! I pray that I, I, God used me to make sense of this. Um, it was tough at first, but uh, once he began to start speaking in other areas, in other situations, he was like, this is what I say. This is what I do. I ain't do that. <laughs> I was like, you sure didn't do that. Whew. All right, man. We love y'all. We're praying for y'all. Y'all pray for us. We'll see y'all on the other side of success. We out of here.